Hello, friends, and welcome to NFL Daily, brought to you by MyBookie. I'm Tom Downey. Alongside me, Harris Rubenstein. It What's is going on? Power Rankings Day. It's the best day. And after week three, quite a bit of changes here. We got, we got a lot of changes, a lot of yes. ups and downs. Uh, a couple, of, I got to say. If it's a all, mess. For all it's the, a it's mess. a complete mess. Like, for all the protests yeah. and everything that happened this weekend, you know, outside of the politics of everything, this was a wild week in the NFL. Absolutely wild. We are only, we are already down to only two undefeated teams in the NFL, so I think the top two are pretty clear. After that, it is a cluster. It, it, it <laughs> cluster indeed. We, I, I, when I was going through and just like kind of fixing our graphics, there are so many one and two football teams. Mm-hmm. The one and two, one and two, one and two, one and two, one. Like it, it's bad, mm-hmm. but at the same time, the NFL wants parity. They're getting parity this year. I feel like every single game, any single team ha- can win. Right, we'll start here with some news and notes. And remember, folks, we are 100% live. So if you've got comments, get them in the comments section. I'm sure we'll get some. We apologize in advance for sliding your team. But it is what it is. We start with Colin Kaepernick. He is ready to go. And, uh, yeah, of course he is because he's better than a bunch of the quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Half of the quarterbacks in the NFL are just t- – can you, can you believe that we are going to an NFL where Case Keenum is starting for a potential playoff team and Colin Kaepernick is still at home? But he actually looked okay. He did look okay. He actually he looked, looked good, which is really weird. It was, it was but, a weird week. You know, th- this kind of goes – But Ryan Nassib got signed by the Jacksonville Jaguars oh, and Kaepernick Nassib. is unsigned. Like, college coaches, he knows the offense, Tom. He knows – take that long to learn <laughs> offense, especially at a basic level. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, th- this just kind of goes back to it. You know, we- we've known that Kaepernick's been ready to play football for a pretty long time now. So I think, I think Brandon Marshall's been kind of our – Brandon Marshall and Eric Reed have kind of been our, our go-to guys when it comes to this stuff. A little fantasy slash NFL rumor here. Andrew Luck might be out until November. That's the, the latest <laughs> rumor there. Uh, I have him in multiple fantasy teams. I'm just hoping for an October return. So – We'll see if that ends up being the case. I, I, I think he's about to practice. No. I think he is about to, to practice here. I really they do. They ruined him. The, I'll put it this way. The it's greatest, not the Colts' fault. They, the, they didn't, yes, it is. They never drafted him an offensive line. Well, that's different. They, I'll put it this way. The greatest college football game I ever saw was Stanford versus Oklahoma State. Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman versus Andrew Luck. I think it was the Cotton Bowl or from a couple years ago, the year that Andrew Luck came out. And I fell in love with Andrew Luck on that day. He is, I am so sad that he's not in the NFL right now. He'd be such a great addition to the chaos that we have in the NFL this year. And he'd be fun there. Uh, Another update here on the injury side of things. Adrian Peterson, his year continues to be a rough one. He's got a knee injury now. Yeah, and, you know, this is just not good. This just, he needs to be traded. He needs to go somewhere else. This isn't. It, it, this whole Adrian Peterson Saints thing, I think it was a huge question mark when he first got signed. I think it's a huge question mark now. Like, why did he go to the Saints? This made no sense. He, I, I said it yesterday on NFL Daily. He apparently thought he was going to a run-first football team. The Saints hate running the ball. In fact, they hate running the ball so much that all of their running backs basically only catch it. So it's a little bit kind of weird to me that they that Adrian Peterson even thought this would ever be a good idea. All right, once again, folks, today's show is brought to you by MyBookie. Head to mybookie.ag to use mm-hmm. the Internet's number one sports book. Fun bet going on here right now, or deal going on here right now. 100% deposit bonus when you sign up with promo code CHAT. You put down 200 they're going to give you a free 200 It's the best deal on the Internet. That's it's insane. Win-win. You give $100. They give you $100. You put in $200, you get back $200. Imagine if they did something like this for DraftKings. I'm pretty sure the, the DraftKings website would completely and utterly crash. Go to my bookie. This is the best deal you're going to find on the internet for sports betting. Go do it right now. I'm honestly kind of surprised that you haven't done it already. Jason chimes in here, says he made off like a bandit last weekend. I think the fans beat us once again this week yeah, on, on the bets. We're, 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 <laughs> there are so many backdoor covers this weekend. Uh, like... Tons. And I got the one right. It's infuriating. There's nothing we can do. We'll talk more about our picks later on in today's show and tomorrow's show as well. Once again, folks, NFL Daily every day, 6 p.m. Eastern time here on the Chat Sports NFL page. One more comment I want to quickly get to here uh, was the comment, I forget by who it was, but said that Case Keenum is a better quarterback than Colin Kaepernick. Kaepernick's a better athlete. Well, how about some fun stats, unbiased stats here in their careers? Case Keenum, 58.9% completion percentage. percentage. Colin Kaepernick. 59.8, so check one there for Case Keenum, or for Colin Kaepernick. Keenum, 6.8 yards per attempt. Colin Kaepernick, 7.3. 
Touchdowns to interception ratio, barely one to one for Keenum, over two to one for Colin Kaepernick. So every stat that matters, Kaepernick has the, I, the I, advantage. I have there. one more stat for you. I'm yeah. pretty sure that Colin Kaepernick almost, you know, brought, first of all, brought his team to the Super Bowl. And also, not to mention, embarrassed the Green Bay Packers on national television during the NFC Championship game. Mm. The, Don Capers has still never recovered <laughs> from that game. He still doesn't know how to cover the read option. So, Colin Kaepernick is a better quarterback than Case Keenum. I don't think we need to add this. David asks, there. how good were those Rams team compared to the 49ers team? Well, the Texans teams were pretty good that yeah. he was on. That's very good. Uh, in spite of Case Keenum. Talk, anyway, Keenum. that's enough Kaepernick uh. Keenum talk here. <laughs> Let's head into the NFL power rankings now. Let's we go. start with the bottom, and then we will work our way up to the top. And we'll begin here at number 32. And at number 32, I feel bad saying it. The Cleveland Browns. I, I thought they were going to be the Colts, and they didn't. The Brownies. You thought that they were going to like actually do something this week, and they did absolutely nothing. It, it was it was a pretty big shame to see what happened with the Cleveland Browns this weekend. They got really they got roasted and toasted by Jacoby Brissett and T. Y. Hilton. Like just just so many times there were lapses in coverage. Jabril Pepper said that he couldn't sleep for days after the Colts game. So. Take what you want out of that. The Cleveland Browns got absolutely roasted. Man, you have Hugh Jackson there on the hot seat. What do you what do you have going on there, Harris? I, I believe that Hugh Jackson is going to get replaced at some point. I think he's a player's head coach. I, I think he's better off as an offensive coordinator for a team. I think that, unfortunately, it, it was well, who, who was the head coach that a couple years ago that it just wasn't his fault that they were bad, but he got fired anyway. But it's happened a couple times. The team's record is just so unbelievably bad that, like, it was like Mike Pettin when he was the Cleveland Browns. He was a bum. There's just nothing he could do. Like, the team was just going to be bad. I think Hugh Jackson's well, going to be the scapegoat. It, he, he regressed. If, if Hugh Jackson shows more improvement, which at this point is only a handful of wins, yeah. he's going to be fine. So I'm not putting Hugh Jackson on the hot seat right now. I think there are more coaches more deserving. Uh, but we'll get to number 31 here Perfect. on our power rankings. The San Francisco 49ers as they... They were so close to beating the Rams. They they got the backdoor cover. That was a great game. It's a fantastic look, you game. You know what? You can say what you want. Kyle Shanahan is making Brian Hoyer look like an NFL quarterback. Not to mention well, in week three, he in, did. In week three, not the fair. first two weeks. No, that that's very true. Brian Hoyer was very very bad. But I gotta say, this Rams team, this Rams defense is is has a lot of talent on the field, and Brian Hoyer made them look foolish. But I gotta say. I'm very excited to see what's coming out of their defensive front four. I like uh, Eric Armstead. I, I love DeForest Buckner. I think John, I think Solomon Thomas, excuse me, is a really special player. They're building something. They're building. And when Reuben Foster comes back, the front seven will improve. They're, they're getting somewhere. Heading they're, in the right direction. They're not winning games, but they're moving. They're going forward, and that's important. We'll head to number 30 here now on our power rankings, a team that you, Harris, actually had lower. Again, folks, the power rankings are AP poll style. The chat sports staff votes. You had them at 31. I had them at 30. It's the Jets. Even after the win, they rose up a little bit. They did. But my question is, who here in the comments section, chime in, believes the Jets are a good football team? I don't think, I don't, maybe, I maybe, second. maybe we, we will get a handful of comments but I don't think that anyone's going to believe in the Jets. I heard a cricket. I don't know. But did you hear the cricket? I, I have bad hearing. Oh. <laughs> Look, th this is a bad Jets team. I don't know. Uh, first of all, the Dolphins suck. The Dolphins are so – how do you lose to the Jets? That's so bad. This is, this is actually classic Jets. When That's they're, so when they're supposed to be tanking, they find, win, they find ways to win games that they shouldn't win. I can't it's believe – classic Jets. I cannot believe that the Dolphins lost to the Jets in this game. Oh, that I can believe it either. absolutely I, 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 I was really confident game. about that spread, and then they, they got absolutely pounded. That is so unbelievably bad. And now to number 29 on our power rankings, the Cincinnati Bengals. They Bungles. almost – that is a slur. Stop <laughs> using it. They almost beat the Packers. They were this close. They had that game. They almost had it in the bag. Almost is the key word. In Only sense. counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Almost. Uh, I got to say, the best play of the weekend was the little hop. The Jim Hunter came into the end zone. But then they, were, they fell victim. The, the Cincinnati Bengals fell victim to the fact that when Aaron Rodgers wants to win a football game and is sick of your crap, Aaron Rodgers is sick of your crap and goes out and wins a football game. Unbelievable, but really nice to see that Vontaze Burfig will be back this week. The suspension, whatever you want to say about what happened in preseason, blah, blah, blah. But hey, that is a huge boost to their defense, getting yep. Burfick back out there. He is the focal point of that front seven. Even as good as Geno Atkins is, Burfitt 
is is one of the vocal leaders on that team. He is a critical part but, to but, their success. Say, hey, hey, Tom. Tyler Eifert's injured again. Do you know that? Shocker. Well, what, you, Shocker. Wow, so surprised. Oh, shocker. Shocker. Wow. Shocker. All right, head now to number. Oh, we have a comment here coming in as, as well. We'll, we'll get to some comments here as well. Again, folks. Jason says the rankings are off to a laughable start, fellas. Jason, like I'm, our I'm, rankings are laughable, or the teams are laughable. I think both, maybe. What do we, what do we, what do, we do? I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> Jason, th throw us your bottom four in the comments. I didn't, I didn't see it if there was already in there, but if not, I'll go through and look again here. But these were the, these were the, the rankings voted on by the chat sports staff, AP poll style. I'm confused. <laughs> I, 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 the, these are the worst teams in the NFL. Jason I says R. Ranks. It's our, rankings. our rankings. Who is worse? What do we do? I like Jason. He is a funny guy. So Jason, please keep commenting. I enjoy you on the show. We will yeah. head now though to number 28 on the rankings here. The Indianapolis Colts. Yes, they beat the Browns, but it was also the Browns who were the last team on our list. So I, look, I, I thought I don't think they're they're that great. I they're had the not. I had the 49ers ahead of them. I even had the Bengals ahead of them, but apparently the Bengals ended up behind them. I don't know. This, this, this Colts team is not better than the 49ers or Bengals. I don't care how many wins but they the, have. Well, but this is power ranking, sir. So you have to include what's happened. They have the, a win that counts for oh, something. Great, they beat the Browns. They, yeah. Oh, excuse me. They barely beat the Browns. Barely beat the Browns. The 49ers, sure, that, they lost, that but game, they scored that game, 39 points. Yeah, but they lost. And that, and that Colts game was in control for almost the entire thing until the very end when the Browns made a bit of a comeback. I'd say that it's it's pretty easy that, to say that the Bengals are better than the Colts. It's been, like they, Andy Dalton actually looked good. A.J. Green dropped 10 for 110 in the TD, and they almost beat the Packers in Lambeau. I, eh, I I had the Bengals ahead of the Colts. I did, As too. did you. I the, did, too. The, the I Colts, think, I, look, AP style, the Colts got knocked down. For <laughs> We're knocking out you on one of the people in our office had the Colton at 26th, which I I don't get it, but that's just me. I don't know. I don't see that. I don't, this team is horrible. Well, we'll head now to number 27 on our list here, a team that was very high to open the season, but the Giants are 0-3. And at this point in the year, with only a handful of teams still looking for their first win, the Giants have to rank low. This is what happens when you have the worst offensive line in football. Like, I don't even think it's a question anymore. This Giants offensive line is the worst in football. Seattle exists, so no. S Seattle does exist, but... Seattle's offensive line is benefited by Russell Wilson being able to move. See, Eli Manning can't Seattle's move. Seattle's offensive line, at least Seattle has won two games. Because Russell Wilson has run around the pocket for his life. Fair, but at the same time, like... this. And the it, offensive line did not win uh, those Guess games. what? Guess what? In, it is 2017. John Jerry is still starting at guard for the New York Giants. John Jerry might be the worst offensive guard in all of football. This, this offensive line is so bad that even DJ Fluker can't even get an offensive snap, which must mean that he is even worse than the rest of the offensive line, which I don't even know how that's possible. Mm -hmm. But we do have good news. Victor Cruz is joining the NFL Network, and he's going to be on Good Morning Football if yeah. they burn listen. So that'll well, be fun. That's an interesting That'll little, be fun. little, little receivers. On, on NFL Network. We will head now to number 26 on our power rankings, the Los Angeles Chargers. I actually had the Giants and Chargers flipped on my personal rankings, but I was outvoted by the chat sports staff in the AP style. The Chargers have been close outside of the kind of the Chiefs game. They've been very close to getting, to getting that win. First two games, you, they, they lost by field make, goals. You can make a pretty solid argument that this team is as close to 3-0 as they were to 0-3. That's what makes them so charged. I don't think that's true two and one, because then. they... 2-1. and one. Okay, that's, two that, and one, that's fair. They're because they are 0-3. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> by like, definition, this, they are not closer to 3-0. This now. Chargers team is... They're charging this season so hard. This is the hardest core Charger season ever. And I, it, it mm. is so painful. It's just a, a rough game there last week for Phillip Rivers. He had a bunch of interceptions. Melvin Gordon, though, he says his knee is fine. We'll see how long that lasts. Jason Verrett, three years now in a row with season-ending knee injuries, mm -hmm. which is a huge shame because he is so, so good when he's actually out there. Mm -hmm. Heading now to number 25 on our power rankings. Then we have a reaction poll for you guys coming up after that. Number 25, the Chicago Bears. Hey, they beat the Steelers last la Last week. They did. And, and you know what? It, like, I would have had them higher on my ranking. I had them higher I on my rankings. Bears I'm trying number, to figure out how they were so low. I had the Bears at number 23. But the reason that I'm okay seeing them here is that their entire offense is two people. I their think we snubbed them. Their entire offense are, are the two running backs. Who, I, I think the Bears have been snubbed. The Bears, even, though, even though they're only one and two, I thought the Steelers win was really was impressive. I would have them a few spots higher. I, and we did. You and I both had them at rank 23. So I think a couple spots higher would be fine. 25, give them another week to see how they go. But 
Man, they got to let Mike Glennon let it loose a little bit. He, like, leads the NFL in dump-offs, which is ridiculous because Joe Flacco is still in the NFL. But they need to let Mike Glennon actually throw the ball a little bit. The, the, he might not be accurate, but the dude has an arm. He has a lot of arm strength that you can throw deep down the field. Maybe it's a receiver issue. I'm not sure, but they need to let, uh, let uh, Mike Glennon go a little bit. Reaction poll, which is the most QB needing team in the NFL? Jets, a, a heart, a wow face for the Niners. Ha-ha for the Giants and anger for the Colts. Harris, we let you put together these reaction polls on having regrets. Why are the Giants on there? The Giants are on here because, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It is time for the New York Giants to move on. All right. And I understand they drafted Davis Webb, but as you and I will say, Tom Downey, Davis Webb is not good. It is time for the Giants to move on from Eli Manning. I'm just surprised the Giants are on here. I, I truly am. I, I, I would have thought a team like the Bills, even a team like the Cardinals, if you're looking at a long-term team the Cardinals, who doesn't have a, a young QB. The Cardinals are fair. The, I, I, you know, Car Cardinals are fair. The reason I don't have the Bills on there is because at least Tyra Taylor is 31 years old. You, sir. Tyra Taylor is going to be on here for a while. You, well, the Bills don't really love him that much. That's fair. You, sir, are dangerously close to losing your votes to your reaction poll votes. And for the Colts on here... QB needy. Also, why? I, I have the Colts in here as QB needy because I am not a completely 100% sold yet on Jacoby Brissett as an NFL quarterback. This is coming from a guy of He's a fan. He's You know, as a fan of a team, but this, well, look, Andrew Luck has had the same shoulder surgery that Cam Newton had. Mm -hmm. I understand that Cam Newton's only problems are not just his shoulder this year. He's not playing well. But the Colts need to watch this shoulder carefully. Because sometimes when you have this shoulder injury, you do not come back from it. Chad Pennington somehow had this surgery three times. Pennington didn't have an arm to begin with. Yes, exactly. But they need to make very, very sure that Andrew Luck is going to be fine moving forward. And he doesn't have a Rich Gannon kind of injury where he loses his shoulder and his career is over. I see the Jets. So Jets look like they won that poll. So the Jets win that one or maybe lose that one. <laughs> Quick recap here of our power rankings thus far. The Browns at 32. The Niners at 31, the Jets at 30, the Bengals at number 29, the Colts at number 28, the G-Men at 27, the Chargers at number 26, and the Chicago Bears at number 25. And that will take us to the number 24 team on today's power rankings, the Arizona Cardinals. They're coming off that Monday night football loss to the Dallas Cowboys. Their only win, a narrow one against the Indianapolis Colts. This Cardinals team is going nowhere. Like I had, I, you're, you're right. I probably should have had the Arizona Cardinals on there over the New York Giants. I will admit, I probably should have had it on there. I didn't. The the Arizona Cardinals need need they they need a lot of stuff on this offense. I, I actually had the Cardinals above the Giants. I, 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 I think I think in terms this, of the reaction poll. Yeah, the thank, reaction okay, there we yeah, go. You, thank you were you. right about the reaction poll. Um, but Make sure I, we cut that up so that I have hair saying <laughs> you were right. Like just at any time I, I need it. I had the Cardinals at twenty five. But th this Cardinals team is just a load of nothing. Like, the defense is good, but it's very spotty. This defense has a lot of really good players at a lot of different spots that aren't really, like, big-time spots. Like, they don't have a great linebacker core. They have one good pass. Well, Marcus Golden, even you said it on Cowboys Report, is an elite pass rusher. Chandler Jones is good, but they have Patrick Peterson, Tyron Matthew, B Buchanan, and Chandler Jones. It's like, they're just like a bunch of different spots. They need to find something to really bring this team together. Head now to number 23 on our power rankings. I actually had them lower, but at number 23, the Miami Dolphins. I had them at 25 by virtue. You guys lost to the Jets. You're, yeah. You're killing me here. I am you're killing me. Now, by definition, they have to be above the Chargers. They beat them head-to-head, -head, and the, the wins and losses are, are, are not the same or skewed in, in one team's favor. So, But I, the Dolphins... I cannot believe they lost to the Jets. I, I thought for sure they were going to win that game. Like, well, first of all, I gave him crap. I was like, how do you lose to the Jets? But at the same time, I, I can see it. They're not a good football team. Like, people, a lot of people had this Dolphins team going to, like, maybe the AFC playoffs as, like, a wild card team. Once Ryan Tannehill went down, this team was done. Ryan, pe I am on the Ryan Tannehill bandwagon. I find that he is one of the more underrated QBs in the NFL. Because why? He's the definition of a system quarterback. The definition. He would be bad anywhere else, but... Why? Wait, wait. I'm going to trigger Harris here. The definition what? of a system quarterback is Tom Brady. That's not true at all. That's no shenanigans. <laughs> that, that, that's just not true. That's just not true. But the, once Ryan Tannehill went down, this Dolphins team was done. I actually, I actually picked the Dolphins as a regression candidate. I had yep. multiple regression candidates this year. The Dolphins were one. The Giants were one. I thought they would avoid that regression. They were not able to do that. Next up on the list was the team that I had pegged for the most regression this year, the Houston Texans. Their point differential was awful last year, was bottom seven in the NFL, and they've had their struggles this year. 
I actually had them a little bit higher. I had them ranked at 20, because to be totally honest, I was wildly impressed by what, from what I saw by Deshaun Watson this past weekend. He was absolutely outstanding against the Patriots. Regardless of what you want to say of how the defense played, this and that, he was evasive in the pocket. He was making good, smart throws. He made a couple mistakes, and, you know, a, you know rookie quarterback growing up, he's going to have some growing errors and some growing pains, but he looked like a legitimate NFL quarterback, and I think for the most part, that is why I had them at 20. They have, they ha they have a lot of room to grow, but I think Deshaun Watson is, is here to stay. I, I think that we, we oversell Deshaun Watson based on what I saw in, in the first couple of weeks. This is, you mentioned this before. The Patriots with, without Dante Hightower, it's two different. It, 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 it's not the same. It is literally two different teams. It is almost as if Dante Hightower leaves and a whole different team defense is playing. I, I've never seen anything like this. This is unbelievable. Hello, folks, and once again, today's show brought to you by MyBookie.ag, yeah. the Internet's number one sports book. This is the one Harris and I use. Get that money. Special deal going on right now. Use promo code CHAT when you sign up. They'll give you a 100% deposit bonus. You put down 200, they're going to give you a free 200. I, do, you know, do you know what I love more than, like, making money off of sports betting? When, when the company you, I'm using... Well, you have not made money this year. That, okay, that's fair. When the company I'm using Even to I'm bet on you. sports is when they give me free money. That, okay, that, that sounds like the best possible thing that could ever happen is getting more money to bet with. By the way, we're getting a little, little trash talk in the comments section right now. From, from Mitchell Renz. Jason's saying, been fun. Saying, yeah, and, uh, Jason as well. I like Jason. Saying that, quote, Jay Cutler is better than Ryan Tannehill. I will, I will not stand for that slander. Jay Cutler is most certainly not better than Ryan Tannehill. Jay Cutler is bad. Jay Cutler is horrible. Don't, don't give me this. I don't, I don't want this shenanigans. He's awful. All right, folks, once again, mybookie.ag, promo code chat. We will head now to the number 21 team on our NFL power rankings. Awesome offense, blah, defense. The New Orleans Saints, they check in at 21. They rose a little bit because they did beat the Panthers. Same old, same old. It's the classic New Orleans Saints. We're going to have Drew Brees carry our whole team, and the defense is going to be awful. Like, this is just, it's the same team every single year. It's so boring. Like, I'm happy that Brandon Cooks was traded so we could actually see what he does on a not boring, uncontending team. Thank God. Well, he's a free agent after this year, so maybe we'll see something fun happen. But the Saints' offense is Super Bowl caliber. The defense, not so much. Getting back Zach Streets, Ron Armstead, as they get healthy. And Willie Sneed is a big boost for that offense. Taron Armstead is not a house. Oh, I don't know. If, is he a household name? Nobody, nobody should be. No one should be. That's fair. Taron Armstead is one of the best left tackles in football. Has been a very underrated guy over the past couple of years. Him being out was a huge, huge knock for that offensive line. And also, crazy thing about Zach Streif's contract, he basically only gets paid when he actually plays. So his, his game day checks are like $100,000 because of the way his contract is. So he's missed the past two games. So he's lost out on over $200,000 by not playing. So Zach Streep wants to get back on the field. Head now to number 20 on our power rankings. And I consider everyone as a member of this group, friends of the show, Bills and Bills Mafia. They're number 20. They rose up after they beat the Denver Broncos in an upset. I was pretty impressed by the defense in particular in that game. The Bills pulling off surprising wins at home against playoff contenders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to every Bills team ever. This is a tough team to beat at home. And I, you know, I, I give the Broncos a lot of crap for not being able to win on the road. But the, the Bills have done this for years. They've always been a big-time stifler when they play good teams at home. It, 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 as a Patriots fan, again, it is so hard to go into Buffalo and win because if you if they stop the run against you their secondary is always going to be solid enough to actually make some plays that this bills team is okay i'm telling you sean mcdermott has this team heading in a really really good direction all right we will head now to number 19 on our power rankings here the carolina panthers look they they won last week or they, they, they lost last week but they had the two wins before that i don't know how good this panthers team actually is I, they, I don't, I, don't, I don't think anyone really knows how good this Panthers team is because this Panthers team is as good as the Carolina Panthers. Uh, excuse me, this Carolina Panthers team is as good as Cam Newton is going to make them. I mean, for the most part, I just don't see how this Panthers team is going to get anywhere without Cam Newton not playing like what honestly has been one of the probably five worst players in all of football this year. We actually had him yesterday when we were doing our MVP power rankings. We had him ranked number one as our LVP. So <laughs> that's all you really need to know about how Cam Newton's been playing this year. It has been bad. LVPs are fun there. Yep. Head now to number 18 on our power rankings. Another 2 and one team. We're into the 2 and ones right now. There are a bunch of them as well. The Baltimore Ravens, they started the year very well, and then they got absolutely 
wrecked by the Jacksonville Jaguars. So and Blake Bortles, what the heck? So you mean the most overrated team in football, basically? Uh, if you're referring to Baltimore, I, I guess I can agree with that. Did, 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 I, I chose the Jaguars in this game because to, to beat them because I was torn. On it. This I, I regret it. I regret is it so much. So bad. I'm going to give you my favorite stat of the week because you know I used to have the Eagle one from last year. This is number one stat of the week. Joe Flacco had 29 passing yards in the game against the Jaguars. 28 of those yards came from his receivers getting yards after the catch, which means that Joe Flacco accounted for one single passing yard in a football game, also threw two pick six and had two strip sacks, which probably will go down as one of the worst starts of any quarterback in NFL history. Joe Flacco is washed up. Flacco is, you have, to be washed up, you actually have to be good in the past, though. Okay. He had one playoff run. He that was it. it. You will never hear me defend Joe Flacco, but you, he did. He was good at a certain period of time. He that did playoff get, run. He, he, he peaked at the get perfect the Ravens, time. He did help get the Ravens to a bunch of Super Bowl, uh, bunch of uh, playoff appearances in a row. But now that, that we are gone. Defense. That, that is gone. It is gone. All right. We will head now to number 17 on our power rankings today. A disappointing week to ever by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They were right around the top 10. Now they fall to one and, to one. And one. I was kind of surprised they couldn't beat the Case Keenum-led Vikings. I was very disappointed by the Bucs. I'm not ruling them out for this year, though, but right now at one and one, what did, what did, what do they got to drop. What do we call them, Tom? They are the most volatile team in the NFL. You never know if you're going to get the Super Bowl contender one week or a top five look and pick kind of team the next week. This is what happens you when you're young. never no, you never know. I think we're I think we're overall a little low on the Bucks. I had them higher. I had them at 15 on my personal ones. Again, folks, these rankings are based on the chat sports staff AP style consensus votes. Yeah, and I, I, for the most part, when it comes to me with this Buccaneers team, I, I thought 10 wins should be the goal for this team. I thought this team needs to at least win 10 games, but so far. It, it has not looked pretty. They, they, they looked good in week one, but this defense has some major holes. Now Levante David is a high ankle sprain. Quan Alexander is rough. Uh, he, you know, he's also out with an injury. TJ Ward isn't even starting. They need to get this defense back on top. In, in the words of Han Solo, it's not my fault that they're so low. All right. I, it's, you know, it, it's not my fault. I had them at 17. Uh, so I, now, I don't think now we're just we're here. just trying to upset producer Brett, who's, who's, who's in our <laughs> ear saying we're playing too much of the blame game. Anyway, let's take you through the most recent or the, the power rankings so far. The Browns at 32, the Niners at 31, the Jets at 30, the Bengals at 29, the Colts at 28, the G-Men at 27, the Charters of Los Angeles at 26, the Bears at 25, the Cardinals at 24, the Dolphins at 23, the Texans at 22, the Saints at 21. The Bills at 20, the Panthers at 19, the Ravens at 18, and the Bucks check in there at number 17. Once again, folks, I am Tom Downey. Alongside me is Harris Rubenstein. What's going on? Producer Brett Scott behind the scenes making it all look pretty. We'll head now into number 16. We're about halfway through here of our power rankings. This is where we get into the actual good teams, and it's 16. I think we've got a couple of good teams already. I think you know what? And guess what, Tom? Welcome to the league average football team. No. It's no. the Rams, baby. The I Rams draw the line. The average this is team. way too high for the Rams. Where do you have the Rams? Oh, I had them. I had them down at 19. You had them at 19. This is too high for the Rams. I you, want, you know why? I want, I, want, I want to tell you this, Tom. Myself, Mitch, Cam, and James all had the Rams at exactly 16. Because that's had, what they are. Their offense has been really, really good. Their defense has been shaky, but they're two and one, and they looked. They've looked. Their offense has looked really, really good. Look at who they've played. They have played the Colts in Week One oh, when they were giving away points. Tom, you. They were giving away points on offense. You, the Colts. The Colts. De the, the Rams defense scored more points than the Colts I offense. Did. I consider you a very respectful player evaluator, right? Yeah. Can you at least admit that the Rams offense, in a vacuum? When it comes to play calling, execution, Are you going to say better talent, than last year? They look good. They're leading the NFL in points. They are, and that's not going to say the case. Sean has turned around the entire team. Look, it's not like we have them in playoff. Like, sure, they're at number 16. They are oh, the league. Oh, that's pretty close to playoff contention. They are contention. the league average football team. That I is think right is there. To, that is the right there to playoff contention. They've beaten the Colts and the Niners. We disagree there. We will move on, folks. Feel free to get your comments in there as well. To number 15. The Seattle Seahawks says they have not looked good to start the year whatsoever. Low. This is a little low. This is a little. I had them at 13. I think 15 is a little bit low. 
they are still two and one. They still do have Russell Wilson and one of the best. They end one of the best quarterbacks in all of football in Russell Wilson. I, I'm very much about the Seattle Seahawks team. I think they're totally fine. They like they, this team is fine. I, I think that the Seattle Seahawks team is going to be fine. They're going to do the same thing they did they last year. They are not 2-1, and one, sir. That is fake news. I thought they were 2-1. No, they're 1-2. and two. They are 1-2, and two, Harris. I thought they were 2-1. No, they are 1-2. and two. They lost to the Packers and the, and the Titans. I still think that this Seahawks team is going to be just fine. Are they out of the title race? I say no. I no. think the Seahawks team is going to be just fine. No, because this is what the Seahawks do. This is what they do. They, they start the year back. Season. 2015, they started the year 2-4. and four. 2014, they started the year 3-3. Three and three. I think the Seahawks team, I know, and yeah, and then when November, December came around, they dominated. Mm -hmm. They dominated towards the playoff as they went along. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be fine. I think they're going to be fine, too. I, I think this is as high as I can justify putting them, and right around this range. I, I had them at 13 simply because I think that they're a better team. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're a better team than what they've showed, and not to mention, I think for whatever reason, their defense hasn't been gelling very well recently. I think they're going to be fine going forward. We will see about about. The Seattle Seahawks. Fair enough. The offensive line continues to concern me. I do think as they play more and more together, they'll be okay. It's far too early to declare them out of the title race. Yes, I, I think that's fair. Leave us a comment. Let us know. We'll have a little bit of an NFC West coming, uh, excuse me, in, in, a little bit, uh, in a little bit of time. But I think for the most part, the Seattle Seahawks team, the one thing that they need to do on offense, they need to get healthy. Jimmy Graham has been so far very injury prone. CJ Procise has not been on the field at all. I, I think for the most part, the Seahawks team needs to be healthy. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, thanks you for all your comments on that one. I saw some good ones in there. We will head now on to number 14 in our NFL Power Rankings. We'll head here to the Jacksonville Jaguars as they are now 2-1. and one. Wins over Houston and the Ravens, their only loss to the Titans. The win over the Ravens was very, very impressive. This Jaguars team, it, it, it's kind of another team. I think 14 is a little bit high for them. I, where did I actually have the Jaguars? I had them at 15, just, I know, like a little bit high, a little bit low. I still think this team is a little bit more average than they're being given credit for, but we'll see what happens with this Jaguars team. I think for the most part, the offense needs to you know, continue to grow a little bit. I think their running game needs to get into a better rhythm. I think Fournette has looked good, but the defense is solid. The defense has a lot of big-time playmakers on it. Talented Boye, young defense. Telvin Smith. Uh, Calais Campbell, Dante Fowler, like th th this is a very good defense. Has a lot of talent all across the board. We'll head now into the top 13 and at number 13, the Washington Redskins coming off that huge win over the Oakland Raiders. I think a bit of a surprise win as well. Yeah, and I, I was actually pretty stunned. This is probably the most surprising win of, of the weekend besides, I guess, the Jets being the Dolphins. But Look, the Redskins' defense is incredibly good and also incredibly young. Jonathan Allen, uh, Kendall Fuller has looked really good. Ryan Kerrigan's one of the best pass rushers in all of football. He's not exactly young. He's probably about a, a middle-aged guy when it comes to the NFL uh, rosters. But, look, this defense has really come around. Josh Doxson is starting to actually do things. I think this is a good football team. Mm -hmm. After the Redskins here, we will head to number 12 on our NFL Power Rankings. At number 12 are the Minnesota Vikings. They are fresh off the upset win over the Bucks. Yeah, and Case Keenum actually looked like a legitimate NFL quarterback. Where did this come yeah, from? Yeah, I, I was very confused and surprised by everything that happened. Yeah, and, and for uh, the this, most, this was not what I expected. Like, this is just classic Vikings having, like, a lot of quarterback problems. They lose Teddy Bridgewater to trade for Sam Bradford. Now Sam Bradford's hurt. Now Case Keenum is starting. But what's going to end up making this team is how long the defense can stay stable. Last year, we saw the, them come off to a really hot start. And then all of a sudden, the Vikings, just their defense fell apart in the second half of the season. So if their defense can stay together, I think they'll be just fine. And we will Once again, folks, today's show was brought to you by MyBookie.ag, the Internet's number one sports book. They're, they're, they've been in the business for years. Their reputation is rock solid. 100%. A great deal going on right now as well. 100% deposit bonus up to 1000 bucks. You put down 300, they're going to give you a free 300 to bet as well. I'm, I'm all about free money. Like any time that you can just say, hey, Harris, you're going to get some free money, I'm, I'm going to accept your free money. It's, it, you know, like, it, it, how can you say no to free money? Go get exactly. free money. Go to mybookie.ag. Exactly. All right, we will continue on here with our NFL power rankings to number 11. And at number 11, the Philadelphia Eagles. And this is an Eagles team. I've been pretty impressed by early in the year. They, they had the, the tough loss to the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. They beat the Redskins and snuck by the Giants in a very close game. This is a team that we saw this last year, too, at the same time. They started the year hot, 
and hit that middle part of the year, and they more or less collapsed. Yeah, for, and also, the, this is a team that, you know, you, you talk about Carson Wentz, you look at the offense, but I'd honestly argue that this is a defensive-driven football team. I think, again, just like the Vikings, this team has a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball, and it's finally starting to show. I think there's the next stage of what their secondary needs to really take this team to elite level. They need a number one guy. Like, they need a corner on the outside that can dominate against a lot of the good wide receivers. For instance, whenever they go up against the Giants, just like we saw, they had no answer for Odell Beckham Especially Jr. Especially with Darby Hurt. Long. Yeah, Bang exactly. Down. And even with Darby, like, you, you He's need... He's not a big guy. You need a number one guy. I thought a really great target for them was going to end up being Tremaine Johnson, but he got tagged by the Rams. I think next offseason you're going to see them make a run at a big-time corner. Head now into the top 10 of today's NFL Power Rankings, brought to you by MyBookie.ag. At number 10, the Detroit Lions, they were this close to being 3-0. This close this to being 3-0. This close. Literally inches away. And we would have inches. had a lot. We would have had a big discussion in the office about where the Detroit Lions ended they up. They would have been two. Uh, really? Yeah, they would have been two. If they were 3-0 and as one of two undefeated teams in the NFL, having beaten the Falcons, I, yeah, that's, yeah, they, that, that, they, that's they would have been fair. two for that's me. That's fair. I mean, the, 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 I think this Detroit Lions team, it, we still, it, it's still a team to me that we don't really know what this team is really capable of. I think that they, they've done a really good job uh, against some tougher competition, but I want to see them do it consistently over a season. I, I'm worried that this team might fall apart at the end of the year. I don't think they have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball. They have Ziggy Hansen, who's good. Darius Slay is a nice corner. Glover Quinn is pretty good. But then after that, it's pretty Especially with some injuries up, up on yeah. that front seven right exactly. now. Exactly. So I, I think after that, it's pretty average. Continue on through the top 10 here at number nine, the Tennessee Titans. And this is a good team. I still think, and I said this from day one of the season, they are the top team in the AFC South. They are the team to beat. Yeah, and, and again, this Tennessee Titans team is so unbelievably complete on the offensive side of the ball. The offensive line is really good. They have multiple running backs who are good. They have multiple wide receivers who can make catches on the inside and on the outside. They have Marcus Mariota, one of the best young QBs in the league. And then their defense is super solid. They have a very good secondary in terms of being able to keep things in front of them. They don't get absolutely dominated on the defensive side of the ball. So if, they can, if their defense can keep them in games and Marcus Mariota can win them those games, then this is going to be a really good football team. This is still a 10-6, and 11-6 football team for me. We'll take you through the power team so far. 32, the Cleveland Browns. The Niners at 31. The Jets at 30. The Bengals check in at number 29. The Colts at number 28. The Giants at 27. The Chargers check in at number 26. The Bears check in at 25. Cardinals 24. Dolphins 23. Texans 22. And the Saints at number 21. The Bills at 20. Panthers at 19. The Ravens at 18. The Bucks at number 17. The Rams then take the spot at number 16 as we get to the halfway point. The Seahawks at 15. The Jags at 14. The Redskins at number 13. Then the Vikings at 12. The Eagles at 11. The Lions at number 10. And then number 9, the Tennessee Titans. That takes us to the number 18, eight, eight team, excuse me, on today's show, the Dallas Cowboys. This is a team that is, I, I, we, I think. We, we almost had a unanimous vote of where the Cowboys should this be. This Cowboys it was close. team is going to beat up on bad teams all year long. I am worried about what they are going to do against good football teams. I am worried that they are going to go up against, like, again, some like the Broncos, or they're going to go up against, like, the, the Eagles, or, like, actual good football teams, and they're going to struggle. I think their defense is, is playing way above their pay grade right now. I think that their offensive line issues are legitimate. Lyle Collins has been awful at right tackle. He struggled. And, and their left guard, who's their right guard? Is it Jonathan Cooper? I don't even know who. Left guard is Chaz Green. And Chaz Green. Collins is, is a right tackle. Right tackle. So, Collins at right tackle, and then Green, like, it's just – you have two big open spots that teams are very clearly exploiting. And then you had, you know, Tyron Smith has been poor this He's year. He's not been as good Travis as he, as he has normally been is. a little bit lower. So Dak Prescott is going to have to win a lot of games for this football team. So we're really going to see what he can do with a lot of pressure on his shoulders. So you saw a bunch of NFC East teams there in the top 15. The Redskins were at 13. The Eagles were at 11. We had the Cowboys at 8. Our question is for you guys, and you get your comments in here as we bring up a weigh-in. Who is the best team in the NFC? So I think we can all agree right now it is not the Giants because they still haven't won a game yet. It is not the Giants. I, I think it's the Eagles. I think the Eagles are the most complete team in, in this division right now. I think they have the best defense in terms of consistency. I think the problem with this Giants defense is that just, it has so many injuries on it. 
But I think for the most part, this Eagles team is complete. The offensive line is very solid. I think their running game needs to get up to par. I think a, a, a trade for a running back could be absolutely dire for this Eagles team. But for the most part, I, 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 I think this Eagles team is a I got to see the Eagles play a little bit better in the middle part of the year. We saw the potential they had the, at the beginning of last year and the end of last year. But the middle part, they were atrocious, one of the worst teams in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I think the Eagles are a year away. Yes. I think they were where, where the Raiders were last year. Or to be two years ago, where the Raiders were, where the Bucks and Titans were last year. Right. I think they're a year away. They're going to finish eight wins, nine wins, somewhere in that range. They they might sneak in the playoffs, but I don't think they're truly ready to take that big leap forward. But year three of their quarterback and Carson Wentz, that's, that's when they'll the take year. the year forward. So I'm still picking the, the Cowboys. I think the winner. This is going to sound really dumb, but it's kind of obvious. The the winner of this division is going to end up being who is the best record versus the NFC East. I, I really. Like, once that, we puts start the, that, that puts the Eagles in a good spot. Yeah, once we get the divisional matchups up and ready to go, when the Eagles start playing the Cowboys and the Eagles start playing the Redskins, we're really going to see what they can do, and it's the same thing with the Cowboys. Hey. The, the, the Cow Look, the Cowboys beat the, the worst team in the division. Congratulations. I can't Not wait to see what they do. the team we thought was going to be the worst team in the right. division. I, I'm excited to see what they do against what seems to be a pretty upstart Redskins team, and I'm excited to see their couple of games hey. uh, against the Eagles. If there's one thing we always know, or almost always know about the NFC East, it's that Week 17 decides... The division, Always. Cowboys at Eagles on Week 17. And, and you know what? Again, th that is when you get Carson Wentz versus Dak Prescott for the division. That would be an unbelievable game because guess what? The hot takes. The hot takes, Tom. All over the place. The, the Carson Wentz is better than Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is better than Carson Wentz. Well, that, that was all there was on it's, Twitter it's in the offseason. It it's was so annoying. Great. It was, well, Dak Prescott had a better rookie year than Carson Wentz. As of right now, Car Carson Wentz has been absolutely great. outstanding. But I, I say the right. I say this right now. Dak Prescott made a couple throws against the Cardinals that I only think maybe two or three quarterbacks in the NFL can make, and he's one of them. We'll Heading out to the number seven team on our list, and I think we're going to get some comments on this one. It is the Oakland Raiders. Uh, it's kind of funny because normally when we're doing power ranks, I actually am the, am the guy that has Oakland lower than they end mm -hmm. up being, or I should say higher ranked. So they're, I would have them like nine, then they're seven. I have them at six this week. I have them above the Broncos which is not how the, the chat sports staff voted. Despite the loss, I actually had them at number five. Uh, I, think, okay. I think that this team, it, it, it did struggle against the Redskins team, but it, excuse me, it didn't struggle to me because they like, they, they, they obviously the offense didn't play well, but it didn't struggle to me because it was a personnel problem. They just, they never really got going. And this Raiders team, that, that's not going to be an issue for them all season long. And mm. I, I think that this Raiders team is going to be just fine. You, you will not, you're not going to be able to convince me that the, that the Pittsburgh Steelers right now are better than the Oakland Raiders. The, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, I, I, like until that offense gets going, they, they, just are, they don't have a good enough defense to keep them in football games. So I think this Raiders team should be a little bit higher, but you, you lose to the Skins, you, you're going to drop a couple places. I, I would have had the Raiders higher, but that's okay. We'll head now to number six on our power rankings, and it's the team you just mentioned, Harris, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. And, and again, I had them at number six, and then our number five team actually at number seven. But this Pittsburgh Steelers team losing, uh, you know, they, they're now 1-12 and 12 in Soldier Field all time. They are now 0-4 all time against Mike Glennon. So maybe it was just a very weird, chaos, football outlier thingamajig. I don't really know. But for the most part, they need Le'Veon Bell to get going. Le'Veon Bell, for the most part, has not been what he was last year. Big Maybe Ben was, has not been what he was exactly. last year. Exactly. Maybe it was some rust. I don't know, but they need to shake it off. There's quick. some comments there about the Steelers and their offense. There's a common theme amongst Pittsburgh, and it is when they are on the road, they just are not good. Big Ben struggles for whatever reason on the road, kind of outside of Cleveland. That's kind of home for him, I guess. And last year, go ahead, sorry. And it's been the case for years. The past several years, Pittsburgh has not fared well on the road. I will say this, though. They beat a Vikings team 26 to 9 that destroyed the Bucks. Yeah. And, I, 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 and that, that was a home game, to be fair, but I, I put a little bit more stock in that than a tough overtime loss to the Bears. The Steelers dropped a little bit on my rankings, but I still think at 2-1, and one, given what we, what, what we know they can be, because we saw them play last year, yeah. we saw them be one of the best teams in the AFC and, and in the NFL, I think this is a team that's going to be just fine going forward, and, especially once they get more home games. And on the road, do you know, it is so unbelievably imperative. I don't care what NFL. It is so imperative that on the road you run the ball well. And what won them so many games on the road last year was how incredible Le'Veon Bell was running the ball. I will never forget the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Buffalo Bills where Le'Veon Bell ran for over 200 yards on the road in the snow in Buffalo to win that game. That is what they need out of Le'Veon Bell to win games on the road. They need him to be the superstar that he is. Mm -hmm. 
Head now to the number five team on our list. We are inside the top five. And one quick reminder here, folks, the difference right now between even 15 and five, or maybe 14 and five, is not very large. Yeah. I mean, there, there are a bunch of two and one teams, but at number five is the Denver Broncos. I'm honestly a little surprised they were so high after I had a debate with you last week about how Denver should be ranked highly. I had them at number seven. I mean, I'm sorry. Th 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 I already know what this Broncos team is because this Broncos team is not any different from the team the last two seasons. They are, they are no different. They are the same exact football team. They will win. Mo they will probably win all their games at home. They might lose two to, to better teams like the Raiders, and they're going to lose big-time games on the road. This is what they always do. This, this has been their team since Peyton Manning left. They struggle on the road, just like the Steelers, and they win their home games. This is a 9-7 and seven football or team to me, maybe 10-6. and six. They're going to get absolutely roasted by the, rest of the NFC, uh, by the rest of the AFC West. I think the Raiders and the Chiefs are going to have their way with this football team. We'll see. That's also because you thought Denver was terrible to start this year. And you I you were all board the Chargers. I you were all board the Chargers. I still do not think that this Broncos team is going to be good for the rest of the season. I really don't. Yeah, they have one of the more impressive wins, I think, with a win over the Dallas Cowboys. That was a big time win. And, and, again, and it was a blowout win. At home, they are one of the most formidable teams in the NFL. On the road, below average football team. Oh, they have been for the past three seasons. Sounds like the Steelers. There you go. Then fair enough. That's why I had the Raiders ahead of both of them. Right. Boom. Head now to our recap power power. Rankings here, Browns at 32, Niners at 31, Jets at 30, Colts at, or Bengals at 29, Colts at 28, Giants at 27, Chargers 26, Bears at 25, number 24 are the Cardinals, number 23 are the Miami Dolphins, the Texans at 23, the Saints at number 21. At number 20 are the Buffalo Bills, the Panthers are at 19, the Ravens are at 18, the Bucks check in at number 17, 16 is the Los Angeles Rams, the Seahawks are at 15, the Jags are at 14, the Redskins check in at number 13. At number 12 are the Minnesota Vikings, the Eagles are number 11, the Lions are number 10, the Tennessee Titans are number 9, the Cowboys are number 8, the Raiders are number 7, the Steelers take the 6th spot, and then the Denver Broncos round out the top 5. That takes us into the top 4, and at number 4 are the Green Bay Packers, who would have plummeted have they lost to the Bengals, but they snuck out a win. This, this is the, they're the Green Bay Aaron Rodgers. Like th this might be one of the most devoid of talent teams in the NFL that keeps winning games because of their quarterback. I, I think Jordy Nelson is great, but you want to talk about system wide receivers. I think Jordy Nelson is up there, but this offensive line, when they obviously, you know, they're missing two tackles. We don't know when they're going to be back. Like they, they're down their top five offensive line. They had to sign Ulrich John. Because their offensive line it's his is his real so name, injured. by the way. Yeah, real I name. I thought for sure that the, the name was wrong. It turns out, no, his nope. name is Ulrich John, not John Ulrich. Look, Ulrich's his first name. And also not to mention. I've never heard of him before. This Green Bay Packers team has had basically one job the past, like, six years. Build a really good defense. They, they haven't been able to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what, like, what the issue is here. The secondary is still complete and utter garbage. The defensive line has one good player on it. They have no good linebackers. I mean, for the past three years, they were banging on Julius Peppers, not f literally turning into dust. And then this year, he's obviously gone. Mike Daniels is finally healthy, but they, they have nothing else on the defense. The injuries that the Packers are really beat up right now, those offensive tackle injuries are a huge problem. If they can survive and once those guys get back, They'll be in a much better spot, and hey, they're they're still two and one. They are, and we know that this is a good Packers team. It, I, I, I We've seen it for years. I think that Aaron Rodgers is good. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to win them games because Aaron Rodgers might just be the most talented quarterback ever. But we'll see what happens to the Packers team. They're going to have a lot of issues later in the season because, as I as we always see with when it comes to NFL football, teams with with that are devoid of talent on the defensive side of the ball get exposed in November or December. So we'll see what happens with this Packers team as we get to later in the season. Head now to number three on our on our, our our list here. The New England Patriots check in at number three. And Harris, we had a long debate last week about the Patriots. Should they be number three or not? I said they should absolutely not uh, because these are power rankings. The record matters quite a bit. Now everyone's two and one. I will give you this one. Come on. I will give you the Patriots three. I, I will allow it. They, do you know what? This throw alone should be the number three team on the power no, rankings. <laughs> no, no. I'm not giving you that. What an outstanding game from Tom Brady, leading the NFL in passing yards and touchdown passes right now. 
Th th this Patriots team is back on a roll. Dante Hightower should be back this week. We not th th This defense has a lot of new faces on it in terms of linebacker core, uh, Stephon Gilmore, the number two corner spot, and on the defensive line. I think that as we get further into the season, their defense is going to congeal a little bit more, and we're going to see a better Patriots team. But th there's no running around. There's no beating around the bush. Their defense has been bad the first three weeks of the season. So I, I, I think the more time they get to play with each other and the re-addition of Dante Hightower, the defense will be just fine. Get your votes in here on our reaction poll, folks. A, who is the second best team in the AFC? I think because there are two undefeated teams. We're not including the Chiefs here. They are by virtue of being 3-0 and having beaten the Patriots. They are the mm -hmm. number one team. A heart for the Patriots, a wow for the Steelers, a ha-ha for the Raiders, and a like for the Broncos. I'm seeing quite a few ha-has flow in here. It's kind of a split vote, though. Yeah, I, I got to say, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I think we just got a lot of Patriots haters in the, in the comments and in our viewers. I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised it's not the hearts. But, again, it's very fair because the Steelers and the Raiders have beaten really good teams. I don't think the Patriots have that dignifying win yet so far. And also, we need to see this Patriots defense really come together. I think that when they start playing against the Raiders and the Steelers, we're really going to see how good this Patriots team is. The comments have flown with, with plenty of comments about, about these, these ranks and saying certain teams should be higher. In the end, it always comes down to if you're a fan of the Raiders, you think these, these, these are bad because they're not number three. Yeah, fair enough. And, and again, this is the nature of power rankings. The, I, I encourage comments. Please keep them coming, folks. We, we do appreciate that. And th this is what I love about the AFC this year. The AFC is so unbelievably top-heavy. It's like, here are like six good teams and then garbage throughout the rest of the conference. So it's, 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 we, we're going to have a really mm -hmm. fun uh, couple last months here uh, fighting mm -hmm. over the AFC seeds. Once again, folks, I'm Tom Downey. Follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney. He's Harris Rubenstein. He's at SportsStein. Feel free to tweet at us. It's okay. Stein? Sorry, what did I say? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to choke you out. Oh, did, did I get it wrong? It's First Stein. time. First time we've been doing these shows for months. You, I finally you, got it wrong. When we write the scripts, uh, you even put like I, I put, I put E's, E's in there to make sure I get Steen right. Yeah, I'm Girl. sorry. Okay. I am sorry, Harris. That's I, I, my bad. I'll, I'll forgive you this time. I appreciate that. Okay. We will head now to the top two teams on our NFL Power Rankings. And at number two, the Atlanta Falcons. And I got, look, I think the top two, this has to be the top two, right? Like it has to be, right? I, if for those that disagree, I, I, I would like to hear an explanation of why. Because these are the somehow we are already I, down to only two undefeated I have teams. Number two, this this is weird. But there's a legitimate argument that like I swear to I swear if you say the Patriots should no, be no, higher. No 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 okay. no. Okay. There's a legitimate argument that that after number one there could be a legitimate reshuffling from like two to five. Just but because, but who are you gonna put above? I I'm not really that that's kind of where it gets tough because like no one really has like a dignifying win yet like the Falcons have against. The Packers at home. And That's the Lions the on the road. Those are two top they, 10 wins. Those are two top 10 wins. Lost. Yeah, but, but they won. They the, this is not shoulda, coulda, woulda. I, these are facts. I, I, I know. I know. And I'll put facts. it this way. Good, the, the Falcons got really lucky. They already played three of the four teams in the NFC North. They don't even have to worry about it. They only have to play the Vikings. It's a really weird schedule work. design, by Very the way. Very strange. But they have the win. They have the home win against the Packers, and that's why they're at number two for me. You, like, you need to have a dignifying win. Like, they're they all, have it. They're also undefeated. They're, they one, are of, undefeated, they're one of two teams that can claim they, they are undefeated. They barely beat the Bears. They barely beat the The Patriots them. barely beat the Texans. It's fair. It's there's fair. A, there's, it's a, fair. there's a lot of those. Uh, I, the all parody right. in the NFL this year is, is ugly. I'm, it's really, ugly. I'm really surprised you took a, a bit of a stance. I have them too. I have them too. I know you do. Anyway, folks, today's show is brought to you by MyBookie.ag, the Internet's number one sports book. A fantastic deal they have going on right now. They are matching the your deal. initial deposit. Trust me, and we know great deals. This is, oh, this is a great deal. Of course. And matching initial deposits up to a uh, up to 1000 bucks. You put down 200 they're going to give you a free 200 if you use promo code CHAT when you sign up. It, it's the it, – I've been in this business a long time, Tom. Mm -hmm. I, I have not seen a deal like this in, in a very, very long time. If you are a sports better – you get free money. They will match it. It's yeah. free. It's free money. I, it's you free you money. needed that, 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 that yeah, free I, I money. I did. I, I'm on a little bit of a we cold will, streak. We will get to our, our, our yeah. results in a little bit here if, if we have time before the end of the show here. Uh, it's been interesting. Uh, the, the, the way that, that the votes have flown in here mm -hmm. and the way that everything has, has broken down. We'll get to that here in, in a little bit as well. We, we have Harris's results, my results, and then you guys, the fans, have all been making your picks as well each week. It's been pretty close, and I, it's also been not that great. I am against the and these are all picks against the spread, which makes things much harder. I have been the Terry Bradshaw of the Chat Sports crew, whereas I'm, my picks are just in last. Terry Bradshaw loses every single year. Like they'll they'll keep track of like their wins and their locks or whatever. Terry Bradshaw is always in last. I'm not doing mm -hmm. great right now. 
We'll, uh, we'll get to those here in a little bit. Once again, folks, mybookie.ag, promo code chat. Here are the picks now coming in. We have them here. Harris is 20 and 27 against the spread this year. I'm getting killed. <laughs> the, you, the fans, split. are 22 and 25. You're almost to, to an even 500 mark. And then I am 21 and 26. We had bad week one. Since then, it's been a little bit better. Yeah, and, and again, that, the, I've been getting, we got so killed last week because almost every single, what was, it, what was the craziest stat that you said that like, like every team uh, covered It was something? all but, I think it was before the Sunday night games, including the Cowboys, I think in total, four or five, I think it was four, I don't have the exact stat in front of me, the underdog either won outright or covered the spread. It was a crazy upset week in the NFL. Yeah, and and I, I'm 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 a big fan. I I, I just I, I gotta stop getting killed. I gotta start I making do. better. Picks. I know. You I, I got I gotta do better, but I will do better. I'm gonna catch you guys. Uh, by four. the end of the year, I, my goal is to beat the fans. I already know that I'm gonna beat Harris. Ah. <laughs> All right, guys. Time for the number one team on the power rankings, and it remains the Kansas City Chiefs. After what they did to the Patriots in Week One. They've looked very impressive since then. They beat a good team in the Eagles. They also beat uh, the Chargers here this week, or I should say last week. And this is a really, really good regular season team. This Chiefs team, uh, who would have thought that the Chiefs led by Alex Smith would be the biggest big play offense in the NFL? And they have been just absolutely outstanding. Kareem Hunt has been arguably the best player in all of football so far this season. This Chiefs team is rolling. They've been dominating the regular season. But I'll put it this way. This, this, just like every year, it doesn't matter what the Chiefs do in the regular season. They have to do it in the playoffs. Mm. Every state, I'm sorry, you kicked four field goals in the playoffs last year against the Steelers, like at home. Not great, Tom. This Chiefs team, look, they can roll through the regular season all they want to do. But what separates the, the legendary franchises from the second tier franchises is what you do in the playoffs. And again, the Chiefs team has been the best team in the NFL this season, no question, but they have to show me in the playoffs. We'll take you through the entire 32 teams one more time here. The Browns at 32, the Niners at 31, the Jets at 30, the Bengals at number 29, at number 28, the Indianapolis Colts, at number 27, the New York Giants, the Chargers at 26, they are losing the battle for LA right now, yeah. the Chargers at number 25, the Cardinals check in at number 24, the Dolphins are 23rd, the Texans are 22. The Saints check in at 21. The Bills are number 20. The Panthers are 19. Ravens, 18. And the Bucks 17. Mm -hmm. The Rams are at 16. The Seahawks take the 15th spot. The Jags at 14. And the Redskins at 13. At number 12, the Minnesota Vikings. Then the Philadelphia Eagles. The Lions start the top 10. The Titans are number 9. The Cowboys are at number 8. The Oakland Raiders are at number 7. The Pittsburgh Steelers are at number 6. And the Denver Broncos check in at number five. Too high. The Green Bay Packers are number four. The Patriots at number three. And then the two undefeated teams, the Falcons and Chiefs, at numbers two and one, respectively. Yeah, and I, I, th I think we actually did a pretty good job of power rankings this agree. week. I agree. I think, like, the well, commenters get, disagree. And that's a okay. I hate, like, as we usually that's, do. That is the nature of power like, rankings. It's, and it, it's all in good fun. I don't, I don't, I don't take think, it personally, gang. I, I don't think. I think it's fine. I, 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 I think we did a really good job this week. Like, last week, it was a little bit more all over the board. But I think this week, we, we did a good job with it. All right, folks. For, for producer Brett Scott, Harris Rubenstein, I am Tom Downey. Thank you all for stopping by. We will loop this again if you missed anything so you can keep watching. Again, thank you to our, our sponsor, MyBookie. Promo code CHAT. They will match your initial deposit. You guys stay classy out there.